In this lesson, we're going to compare two kinds of cells found on Earth. Uh, the amoeba and paramecia are going to be in the category of complex cells. They're one-celled organisms, but the cells are large and complex. That's in contrast to bacteria, much smaller kinds of cells, and they're simpler. In this picture up top here, the bacteria would be these little rod-like things in the background. An obvious size difference, the amoeba and paramecia, even smaller species of amoeba, are much larger than individual bacteria cells. In this picture, we see the contrast again. We have uh, the amoeba pseudopod here, the paramecium, and all these little rods are bacteria cells. Sometimes they come together to form these filaments, but they're much smaller. Complex cells have a nucleus and mitochondria and are much larger. Here we see the size difference again, a big old uh, amoeba pseudopod crawling in a bed of bacteria cells here. In fact, in this picture, the amoeba is covered with clumps of bacteria. These little colonies here are all bacteria cells. So the bacteria cells are growing and dividing and forming a colony on the surface of the amoeba. Here's a small species of amoeba, but still, even these small species are considerably larger than a single bacterium. Here's another example of a small uh, species of amoeba up top right, and, and an even smaller species of amoeba, but still larger than these individual little squiggly things. These are bacteria. So our cartoon version of a complex cell might look like this. We've got a nucleus in a complex cell and mitochondria, multiple mitochondria. And of course, complex cells are larger than the simpler bacteria type cells. Here again, we see a, a small species of amoeba and the bacteria in the back, background. And if we do a kind of a, uh, another cartoon version of a complex cell, we'll use this diagram to represent, it could be an animal cell, it could be just an amoeba paramecia, although it doesn't have the shape of an amoeba or paramecia, it's a sort of an abstract version of it. Well, we've got the nucleus, that's a feature of a complex cell, mitochondria, that's a feature of a complex cell, and the large size is a feature of the complex cell. That's in ca uh, contrast to bacteria, which are smaller, but we can also draw a cartoon that represents this type of cell as well, and we're going to use this picture as our cartoon. Now, uh, there are lots of structures inside the cell that you might be familiar with, and so let's uh, take a moment to look at some uh, similarities and differences between these two kinds of cells. First, a notable difference is the relative size. So again, the amoeba paramecia or an animal cell is considerably larger than the bacterium. But let's look at some uh, similarities. If you put them side by side, our cartoon uh, cells look sort of like they, there's a lot, uh, a lot in common there. Let's f first focus on the membrane. All cells on Earth have a cell membrane composed of uh, a lipid bilayer. Now, some bacteria also have a cell wall, but not all bacteria do. So, all, uh, so this is one similarity. All cells, bacteria and complex cells, are bounded by a flexible cell membrane. In addition, all cells have transport proteins inserted into their membranes for the purposes of, of getting important energy molecules or other nutrients into the cell. In addition, all these cells have teams of proteins that are going to do important metabolic reactions like uh, breaking apart glucose to get energy, right? So all cells can do the kind of metabolism necessary to extract energy from its food. All cells uh, produce chemical energy in the form of ATP. Now in the complex cells, we saw mitochondria uh, repackage the energy of glucose into ATP molecules, just called chemical energy here in this scene. The bacteria, what I've drawn up here is that there's a whole team of proteins inserted into the membrane. These are the proteins responsible for generating ATP molecules, uh, but we're not going to go into the details of that biology. But it's enough to say that, that bacteria and complex cells run on ATP energy. All cells, the bacteria and uh, the complex cells, have teams of proteins that will do uh, construction projects, that will take the nutrients from food and build important molecules that cells are made of. And all cells, bacteria and complex cells, have DNA. DNA stores the recipes to build all the proteins of the cell, and it can be duplicated as well. That permits uh, uh, reproduction. 
Now, in the case of bacteria cells, they simply duplicate their circular chromosomes. So you'll notice in bacteria, the DNA just exists in the cytoplasm, and it's a circular molecule of DNA. So what the bacteria cells do is they duplicate that circular bit of DNA and then deliver one copy to each daughter cells. Uh, here we see in the left picture here is a bacterium that there, that little gap there, that's where the bacteria cell is going to divide into two. It's magnified over here. So bacteria cells grow and then they divide. And prior to dividing, they're going to duplicate their DNA. Uh, actually, before we get to amoeba, let's take a, a couple of other pictures here. Here we see uh, some dividing bacteria again. And this kind of process of cell division is the principal way that bacteria reproduce. Now, amoeba also re can reproduce in this uh, fashion. They're going to uh, grow, and then they're going to duplicate their DNA and then split, as you see in, this, uh, in these pictures here. So if we were to think about what's going on inside the cell, we saw from an earlier lesson that the amoeba is going to duplicate their DNA, and then the copies will be delivered to the daughter cells. So the individual on the left has one set of DNA molecules, and the individual on the right should have an identical set, with the exception of whatever mutations might have occurred during DNA duplication. Now, there are some differences then, and let's start with the DNA differences. While both kinds of cells have DNA, in bacteria, the DNA is just in the cytoplasm. There's no membrane around the DNA, whereas in a complex cell, amoeba, paramecia, or an animal cell, there is a nuclear membrane. In addition, uh, the bacterial DNA it typically it comes in the form of a circular chromosome. Chromosome would just be a long bit of DNA, but in this case, it's a circular bit of DNA, whereas in more complicated cells, the DNA exists as individual uh, chromosomes, just straight, long molecules of DNA, often wrapped up around proteins, but a single straight molecule of DNA would be one chromosome, and complex cells have, might have multiple chromosomes. So they exist as straight chromosomes versus circular chromosomes in bacteria. Uh, here we can get a look at paramecia under some special lighting conditions. We can see like the blue oval structure, that's the nucleus of the cell. So down here we see the nuclear membrane. We can't see inside the nucleus to see the chromosomes, but the DNA would exist as uh, straight chromosomes um, inside the nuclear membrane here. So that's a difference between a complex cell and a bacteria cell. Another notable difference then, of course, is the complex cell is filled with mitochondria. These are the power plants of the cell, where glucose metabolism will, will produce lots of ATP molecules. Uh, bacteria cells, notice they don't have mitochondria. In fact, if we just kind of think about that, the good, there's good reason, because the bacteria cell itself is about the size of mitochondria, so it would be impossible for bacteria to possess mitochondria, let alone more than one. So clearly a difference here. So how can the bacteria survive without uh, mitochondria? Well, remember, they're doing that important ATP production with just uh, proteins uh, stuck in the surface of the membrane. So the chemistry that goes on in the mitochondria in a complex cell is simply just occurring in the membrane of the bacteria cell. If we summarize some of these differences with a chart up here, simple versus complex cells, bacteria are the simple cells, um, they both have membrane, a cell membrane. They both have the fluid cytoplasm in the cell where lots of the chemistry happens. They both, of course, uh, produce lots of different kinds of proteins to do all that chemistry of life. They both have DNA, the recipes to build the proteins. But here we get to the differences. The complex cells have a nucleus, so the, a, a membrane that surrounds the straight chromosomes of the organism, and complex cells have mitochondria. And then there's the size difference as well. Over here, we see in the picture here, notice the bacteria. This kind of bacteria, it has to get uh, food from its environment. Uh, this type of bacteria can perform photosynthesis, but both types are small. Bacteria on Earth are small cells. They never grow to large size. The complex cells are significantly larger, and that... Uh, uh, that cries out for an explanation. Uh, how did cells, how did these kind of cells get so big? And why must bacteria remain so small? We'll tackle that in a later lesson.
So let's summarize then the universal features of cells. Cells have a boundary that controls entry of nutrients, exit of wastes. They have a fluid interior where the chemistry of life occurs. That's the cytoplasm. Cells uh, extract energy and resources from the environment to maintain life. All cells are doing this, bacteria and complex cells. Uh, cells have a team of molecular machines called proteins that do a wide variety of tasks needed to keep the cell alive, like processing energy, building uh, molecules, repairing damage, carrying out cell reproduction, like duplicating DNA. And cells have a set, uh, a, have a set of information molecules called DNA that carry the instructions for making the proteins. And DNA, importantly, can be duplicated and that allows these cells to reproduce. Now let's in introduce an analogy. Cells are like modern cars. They have a boundary, an engine, and a computer. And all cells have these three basic functional parts. So let's first take a look at the body. Well, the cell membrane is kind of like the body of the car. The proteins that are doing all those chemical reactions like metabolizing glucose and building important molecules are kind of like the metabolic engine of the car. And then <clears throat> the computer in the car is like the DNA. So DNA has the recipes to build all of those important proteins. And, and DNA will control when a protein gets made, how much of the protein is made, etc. Now to wrap this up then, let's just uh, note a very important finding. When we study living cells, we find that they're made of molecules. Here's an amino acid up here. This is glucose here. Here's a kind of a cartoon diagram of a lipid. Here's DNA. And we've got cartoon proteins up here. These are the kinds of molecules that are the building blocks of cells. But the shocking thing is that none of these molecules is alive. So that forces us to a, a, a philosophical conclusion that cells are made of molecules which are not alive. In other words, a living thing is composed of non-living parts, which means it's the interaction of non-living molecules that creates a living cell. This makes life a process, not a thing. So life is an ongoing process. It is a membrane-bound structure with all kinds of these different parts with purposes. And when all the protein parts are doing their uh, assigned jobs, the whole cell is alive.